Hi everyone, welcome back to My Parenting Way. Today I'm going to give you an update on Aiden, who is now 11 months old. So he's not here again, and that's a very good reason. Again, he's sleeping and I just can't hold him for these videos anymore. He just moves around too much. He is both active and clingy in equal measure, which is exhausting to say the least very exhausting according to our bathroom scales he weighs about 11 and a half to 12 kilograms which is heavy it's like carrying around a dumbbell everywhere he's huge and it's a bit of a catch-22 actually because what happens is he gets clingy because you know he's a baby and he wants comfort which is fine but he's so heavy that I can't actually hold him or carry him for very long so then I put him down which then makes him panic and it makes him even more clingy and wants to be carried more because I keep putting him down everywhere so it's this big vicious cycle of me putting him down him crying me picking him back up again to try and comfort him me putting him down again so I'm getting guns, I'm getting proper guns from carrying this like little bowling ball around everywhere. And what's annoying is that it's definitely out of frustration, He's there's nothing else wrong with him. So he'll be clinging at my legs as I'm like doing dinner, um, crying and screaming and I think, oh my goodness, he's in pain or there's something wrong with him. And literally, the moment I pick him up, he's absolutely fine. He just it's completely quiet and he just looks up at me and or, or he'll be in my arms and then he'll try and push himself off me to try and grab something that's within my height range so i'm basically just this vessel that he uses to be picked up so he can get to a higher surface to grab anything he wants <sighs> he's still absolutely obsessed with things like keys and locks and buttons and all things like that so um, I think the other thing is that I pick him up and if he sees a button like a light switch on our in his eyesight he will point to it and we'll have to go over and he'll turn it on and off and look at the lights and he thinks this is wonderful playtime um, and again doorknobs he loves doorknobs he loves doing the handles he loves playing with keys in, in the in the key lock and, and all this kind of thing will entertain him for a long time. But all of these things means I have to pick him up to get to those places, which again, it's all about the picking up and him playing. But yeah, it, it's getting tiring. I've noticed recently as well that his feeding's gotten a little bit worse. And I have also noticed that he's almost flat out gone off purees now and that he will only eat something that he can pick up with his hands. Which again is fine to a degree, but when we're making batch family meals quite often, this will be something that is like chili con carne or a mild curry or, you know, something that is quite liquidy based, um, which is <laughs> difficult to, to do. But I will put it in front of him either on the high chair or I'll put it in a bowl and give him a spoon and he'll try and feed it himself which he is more happy with um, but there's always loads of mess there's always loads of mess everywhere um, which is fine but I'm now getting to that point where I'm just sick of cleaning the floor for the hundredth time in the day and it's um, we never have a meal without at least a good meter ring of food all around the high chair which is fun Something else that I've noticed about him eating is that he is starting to throw stuff off the high chair. So I'll put it in front of him, he'll play with it for a bit, but then he'll just throw it off and then he'll look over the side and say, ah, oh, that's what it does. <laughs> so I, I'm trying to be very calm with it, very logical and just think, well, he's just experimenting. Um, so I pick it up, put it back in front of him as long as the floor's relatively clean and yeah so that's a new game that we're having to deal with i do think a lot of it is also to do with teething so if he's finding whatever he's eating is, is too hard for his gums I, I just don't think he wants it so he just throws it he does still have the 40 so the two at the bottom two at the top but a fifth one has just popped out so one next to the one of the top teeth has just come out which i'm really glad actually because for a long long time he's only had the four and i was looking at his teeth thinking thinking where are all the other teeth it's been months so there was me having images of him 
get into 18 with only four teeth, but he's fine. There's more coming. Talking of teeth, he's also definitely developing a sweet tooth. So he is loving anything that is sweet tasting, mostly fruit. We don't give him anything with sugar in, but fruit is the firm favorite. Anything that is fruity, he'll love. And his most recent love is um, clementines or like easy peelers, you know, the little oranges that you, you can take the skin off really easily. And he'll go through, he can easily like, go through a packet of them in about 10 minutes. But I don't, I try and curtail myself. So I'm trying to give him things like vegetables um, first. So the moment he sits down in a high chair, give him loads of vegetables, put loads of vegetables in front because he's hungry, he's more likely to eat these and try them. Um, and then I'll give him like his actual sort of meal his with carbohydrates and, and other vegetables mixed in. And then hopefully then end with some fruit. So he does get his little sugar fix, but without um, filling up on that first, which is really difficult actually, because when he's hungry and you're in the middle of cooking or you've ended up um, batch cooking something, it's still hot and it's cooling down and he's hungry. It's very difficult to sort of um, calm him down when all he wants is food straight away so fruit is the obvious thing to grab because it's it's easy you can peel it easily you can chop it up easily and it's cold and you know you'll love it so i'm trying to stop myself from giving too much fruit as far as milestones are concerned he is now starting to properly walk which is really exciting he is going between bits of furniture so he'll if you've seen behind me, I've got two different sofas. He'll then walk from one sofa to the other or a sofa to the coffee table or the dining room table to his pram. And he'll start to go in between and walk in between, um, which is cool, which is nice. He isn't able to stand up by himself yet in the middle of the floor. At the moment, he needs to crawl somewhere and use whatever it is to crawl up and stand up and then he'll walk. But I suspect that once he's figured that bit out, there'll be no stopping him. He's getting extra quick at cruising as well. So um, we've got kitchen doors, obviously all around our kitchen and he'll go zooming around them really, really quickly, um, which again is fun until he starts opening cupboard doors, which uh, we've now had to baby proof, we've put baby proof um, locks on all of them now. So he, some of them I haven't because I figured that this is nice playtime for him and actually it keeps him quiet in the kitchen. So things like the Tupperware um, cupboard, he can open and he'll like tough out all the Tupperware and he'll use it as building blocks and I'll build him a little tower and he'll knock it down. So, and that's fine. And he'll chew some of the lids, which is nice for his teeth. So um, I don't mind that one as much, but it's, Getting, it's getting messy in the kitchen. He also still absolutely loves knocking on pots and pans with a wooden spoon. Um, he makes so much noise. Typical boy, you just leave him with something, he just bashes it. Um, but he's absolutely in love with wooden spoons. Um, if, if there's anything that I know that will calm him down, it's a little wooden spoon and he'll just hold it and just walk around with it. And actually the other day we had to go for a walk in the pram and the wooden spoon had to come with us, which attracted a few funny looks, but I thought whatever keeps him quiet and it's safe, so it's fine. <laughs> So his language skills are also improving and rather than him being able to do a lot of talk himself, he, he is now showing signs of being able to understand what we're saying. For example, every time we say dog, he goes, <laughs> as in it's barking, woof, woof. So say dog, he goes, <laughs> um, and that's his way of knowing that he knows what a dog is. He also knows, he also knows knows. <laughs> funny sentence but if you say nose to him he'll point at your nose and he'll point his, he'll point at his own nose which is very cute and he's now starting to understand eyes um he hasn't quite got mouth but we're getting there but he is starting to say simple words and put them into context so he'll say mama every time i walk into the room and he'll say yum yum every time he sees food and he's hungry so um, every time he's in the kitchen and he points he goes yum yum to a bit of food it means that he's hungry so that's actually quite useful that he's starting to use these language skills to communicate with us properly and show us what he wants as far as milk feeds are concerned, we have officially stopped 
breastfeeding and it all happened um, over not too long ago actually he became quite ill he had a temperature he wasn't sick or anything um, but he was just feeling really, really under the weather he had a, a little fever thankfully it wasn't COVID or anything too serious but um, what this did was actually just make him reject me and reject the boob. So um, when I tried to feed him, which I thought would be the natural good thing to do, you know, being close to me, having mum's milk, you know, all those kind of things that you think, well, um, a sick baby might like. Um, he didn't want any of that. He actually physically pushed me away and just screamed and thrashed. And I thought, right, okay, that's fine. Um, and then um, I thought I'd try him on the bottle to see if that worked. And he, he took the bottle, no problem. So in conclusion, the boob is off, bottle's definitely on. And I'm actually really relieved that he's done this all by himself. I was really worried that we'd be in for a little bit of a, a battle trying to get him onto the bottle full time and to try and wean him off me. But actually he's he's done this himself. He's he's chosen to stop breastfeeding and he prefers the bottle and actually I'm really happy with that. And this is perfect because this is days away from me starting back at work. So I think that's an, an amazing transition and it's put, you know, been a big weight off my shoulders. He's also down to just two feeds a day now. And again, I was a bit worried about this because we always fed him to sleep. He has two naps a day and then he goes to bed at night. So I was feeding him before each nap and then before he goes to bed. Um, but recently, because of the sickness, actually, he's gone to bed without any issues and not wanting a feed because he's just been so tired. So we've taken the sickness as our opportunity to try and drop a feed and it has worked. So he has one feed in the morning before his nap and then he has a second nap in the afternoon and then he will go to bed with a bottle. And um, yeah, that's working pretty well. I'm going back to work in four days time and I am a healthy mixture of excitement and nervous as you'd expect really. I think I just need a change now. This routine, uh, daily routine of baby stuff and not having any kind of real adult contact is starting to get me a bit low. It's already been a very weird year with having a baby during COVID anyway, um, but I'm just I'm ready to get back on it. Also, I am aware that Aiden probably needs a little bit more as well. He is a big boy, he is an active boy, he's also a very sociable boy when he is finally amongst other children. So I think that it's gonna be a really good thing for him to, to go to nursery and start mingling with other babies. Right, I think this is a really good time to wrap this up. So I just wanna say thank you for listening. I hope you found this useful. And of course, hit the like and subscribe button and ask me any questions in the comments below. I'm very open and honest uh, about life and family and anything in general. So please ask me any questions you'd like and check out my Instagram page on my underscore parenting underscore way. And I will see you next time.